All right, what's good, YouTube? This is Box Wave. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, smash that like button to support the channel, share the video, and all that good stuff. So, let's get right into it. So, this list right here is a total fantasy list. My personal list is based on the eye test, it's based on resumes, it's based on what we've seen from them lately. All right, but this is a top 10 non champion welterweight list. All right, which is subject to change probably after this weekend because we have a lot of these welterweights fighting this weekend all right and that's the reason why that's what inspired me to make this video because a lot of these guys are going to fight this weekend and i want to bring awareness to these other fighters because i said to you the other day being that spence is training so hard for this fight and i think it's i'm glad that he's taking his career seriously I named a lot of fighters that he may have to fight in the near future if he is to beat Ugas this weekend. It's not an easy road. We all want the Bud Crawford, Errol Spence fight, but these are other guys that are waiting to get a shot soon. Some of them are already mandatories. Some will be a mandatory very soon. Um, a lot of these fighters didn't even fight each other yet, but this is a top 10, and I'm basing this list totally off the eye test who I think is the best. If all of these guys, all the top welterweights fight each other, if they were to fight each other, and I'm basically saying the number one guy, I think I feel like that number one guy that's on this list will probably lose the very least. And the number 10 guy is a guy that will probably lose the most out of everybody that I compiled for this list, all right? Plus, also, I have some extra guys out there just in case they didn't make the, 10, the top 10 list. But these are other fighters that you should keep an eye out for because they're still around. Whether they lost recently or not, they're still pretty close to being a top 10 fighter. They just didn't make the cut. So I'll say that at the very end. Also, Sean Porter is not on this list because he officially retired. And unless he comes back and shows us that he's still one of the top, you know, guns in the in, in division, um, then we can, you know, talk about this. Not that I'm going to do another list or anything. This is like a one-time thing. But the reason why Sean Porter is not on this list is because he recently retired. So don't be looking for him in this top 10, all right? So anyway, I'm going to start from number 10, and then I'm going to work my way up to number one, all right? So the, the first guy, Eggy Cavalasquez, he's at number 10. I put him at the number 10 spot because good boxer, uh, very powerful fighter. Uh, lost to Terrence Bud Crawford, but gave him a good fight. Was able to hurt Bud. Some people say it was a knockdown in there. Um, and also, he gave Virgil Ortiz a very good fight as well. Um, was able to hurt Ortiz in that fight. It was a really good banger. And I think he's still very dangerous. Um, he beat David Avenesian, um, who just, he's one of those people that just barely didn't make the cut. But because he beat David Avenesian and stopped him, I got him at the number 10. Respected fighter, powerful fighter. We'll probably see more of him in the future. But um, for right now, he's at the number 10 spot. Number 9, I have Iamantes Stanionis, all right? He's going to be fighting this weekend. Undefeated, young, Lithuanian fighter. He's going to be on the undercard of Spence and Ugas um, fighting uh, Rasa Butayev, all right? Which, which should, it's a big possibility that that may be fight of the night. All right, great matchup. Both of those guys is undefeated. Um, Stan Jonas, very strong fighter. Seems like a very durable fighter. Likes to come forward, brings a lot of pressure. Likes to go to the body. Um, I like him. I like him. Is this? He's at number nine because I just want to see a little bit more. The only thing he's done was go to a decision win over Tomas Delorme recently a guy that a lot of fighters a lot of top fighters up and coming fighters has already stopped so even though it was a good win i wanted to see him a little bit more i still want to still not completely sure about him but i think he's he's done enough to to make me see like he's a top 10 guy to me you know i think he's up there with those guys so i have him at number nine number eight i have rashidi ellis now rashidi ellis i had him early i had him actually higher up on the list but the reason why I brought him down is because out of all of these guys, he's probably the most inactive fighter. All right. He just left Golden Boy and now he's with the PBC. So hopefully with the PBC, we could get a little more out of him. But at his age, you know, that skin pushing 30, 30 soon. I feel like I've been watching him for so long now, like since the Eddie Gomez fights. I feel like at this point, he should have 
at least for for a mandatory or a title eliminator or something. He should be higher ranked and he should be fighting more, you know, against dangerous opponents, the top guys. Um, respect his win over uh, Alexis Rocha. That is good. That's aging well because Alexis Rocha was undefeated at the time and he recently beat Blair Cobbs, which was a good win. But I'm not rating that win so high because I didn't think much of uh, Blair Cobbs anyway. But Rashid Ellis, probably the fastest hands out of everybody on this list. Very good fighter. Again, I had him ranked higher, but because he's been so inactive and I'm waiting to see him really shake it up with somebody that's really good. I haven't seen that yet, and I'm still waiting on that. So I had to drop him down a few spots to number eight. But he's undefeated, and um, hopefully we get some real good fights from him soon, all right? So number seven. Number seven, I got Connor Ben. All right, Connor Ben is undefeated, UK guy. I really like him. A lot of power, good boxer. You know what I'm saying? Fun to watch for sure. The reason why I have him at number seven and not higher than that is because, first of all, I want to see him do more. Um, I like what he's doing, but very calculated opponents to me, you know, very calculated. And sometimes when I see that, it's like, yes, you look good. You look flashy. You got the power. You're explosive. He looks like he's the goods, but a lot of, priv a lot of privilege when it comes to him compared to everybody else on this list. All right. Um, so when it comes to like Algeria or this weekend, we got him against Van Heerden, you know what I'm saying? Those kind of guys, it's like, we know how this is going to end, you know, and Samuel, Va Va of Samuel Vargas, those kind of wins are the wins that we expect from you, you know, um, they're good wins and you're getting better, but you know, when you do the call outs and you're calling out like Amir Khan and Kell Brook. I want to see you call out like Jerron Ennis. I want to see you call out Virgil Ortiz. I want to see you really call out the fighters that are really, really relevant. You know what I'm saying? Really, really relevant. And he's called out a few guys that are good. I know he called out Sean Porter at one point. I believe he called out Kell Brook recently. So those are good call outs. But I want, I want to see a little bit more from him. But he looks legit. You know, I like him a lot. Um, if it's based, if we were basing on who I personally like more, like personally, like, I like the way I like I'm entertained by him higher than a lot of these other dudes that's on this list. But I just don't know. You know, I want to see how he looks when he steps up for real. All right. But based on the eye test, I think he's number seven. Number six, I got Rasha Butayev. All right. Which is probably going to be surprising to see me, some of you because I know a lot of y'all are not that familiar with him. He's the one that's fighting Stan Jonas this weekend on the Errol Spence car. But from what I've seen, based on his amateur background, he has a lot of experience, 400 fights, only eight losses. Um, in his professional ranks, he's undefeated, had a no contest against uh, Basputin because Basputin was juiced up in that fight. So they overturned that law. So he's currently undefeated. Um, but he stopped Jamal James, who I saw as one of the top 10, like maybe the number nine or 10 at one point. He stopped him. And Jamal James, even though he was... He lost to Ugas before, um, Best Beauty, uh, uh, Best Beauty, not Best Beauty, oh, damn, uh, Butayev stopped him, you know, a lot of power, um, very durable, come forward pressure, intelligent pressure fighter, I really like his skills, and this is the reason why I have him over Conor Ben, because if I think if they were to fight right now, I think he would give Conor Ben some help, not saying that, I don't know who would win that fight, but those are the kind of fights that are real tough fights, for anybody at welterweight, including the champions. So Butayev, I really, I, I really like him. I really like respect him, you know. And I think, I think real highly of him. And um, I'm not sure how it's gonna go with Stan Jonas this weekend because I think that's a real 50-50 fight. I even said that I'm probably, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a draw. But if I had to lean between those two, I would put Butayev uh, just a tad bit ahead of him, just be, just based on what I've seen. All right. So number five. Number five, I got Danny Garcia. I know he's trying to go to 154, but his last fight was at 147. And he's still he's still actually a welterweight until I see him fight at 154. And um almost forgot about him, you know, but um with his experience, even though he hasn't lost, he hasn't won the big fights, the major fights. He lost to Keith Thurman, he lost to Sean Porter, he lost to Errol Spence. Keith Thurman, Sean Porter were really close fights. You know what I'm saying? And um, even though he lost to those guys, he did beat 
some solid welterweights, not the top welterweights, but he beat some solid welterweights, and he was a great junior welterweight, all right, uh, unified champion down there. So uh, with that being said, I have to put him at number five just based on what I've seen from him, what he's done as far as his resume. That's why he's there. Good counter puncher, heavy handed, um, probably proven to be the most one of the most durable fighters out there. All right, never been knocked down, never been dropped. Now even as an amateur, so I think um, Danny Garcia, you still got to put him in that top spot. I can't put all these other guys there because I want to see more from them first. And I know that's going to be a little bit contradicting because there's some guys I didn't name yet that hasn't had a resume that Danny has. But based on the eye test, I think the guys that have above Danny has already beaten them or, you know, would beat them if they were to actually fight. All right. So number five, I got Danny Garcia. Number four, I got Kel Brook. All right. Now, the thing with Kel Brook is real tricky because his next fight might mean it could be the end of him. It could be retirement shit. He might even retire right now. I don't know what Kel Brook is doing, but beating Amir Khan, um, I know it's not the biggest win. But I still believe, like, I've seen a lot of flashes of old Kel Brook in there. And I know it's based on Amir Khan. But Kel Brook only lost to the super elite in the sport. He lost to Errol Spence. He lost to Terrence Bud Crawford. He lost to Triple G. These are pound-for-pound -pound level fighters, all right? Most of these guys on this list haven't even been in the ring with those kind of, like, you lost to three pound-for-pound -pound level fighters. One of them was 160. All right, and he did a lot of damage to Kell Brook, but if he were to fight some of these guys that I have below him, I still think today that Kell Brook can possibly beat some of these younger guys. Not sure about it, but I definitely think he'll beat Danny Garcia if they were to fight each other. That's the way I see it. I could be wrong, but it's whatever. I have him at number four until he gets beaten again. You know, I still think he's a top welterweight for now. All right, um, number three, same thing, Keith Thurman. Got to keep Keith Thurman up there because I know he's lost to Manny Pacquiao. Uh, I know he struggled against Josecito Lopez, and he struggled recently a little bit to Mario Barrios. But um, he looked great. You know, he looked in great shape. He looked like he's back. He's back to being confident, and he's boxing, still boxing really, really good. Still got the flashiness, the quickness, the power, um, the movement, you know, just the overall ring IQ. I still rate him Heidi up there because of what he's done. His resume is probably the best resume out of everybody on this top 10, including Kel Brook. His re resume is solid. He's unified. He lost to Manny Pacquiao, but this is him coming off of a layoff as well as Manny Pacquiao was coming off of a layoff or being older or whatever. So I think Keith Thurman, for now, he's still number three because I still think even though he's older, I still think he beats all these other guys that's under him for now. Maybe he goes in there and fight them and loses. But right now, I still have number three. And number two, I got Virgil Ortiz right now. Virgil Ortiz has been on a tear. He's been on a run. Y'all already know who's going to be number one. But Virgil Ortiz right now, I see him beating all these guys that's underneath everybody that's under him. You know, um, yeah, he might get exposed. He might get clipped by one of these fighters if he were to fight them. But right now, he's solid, and he's real close to getting the title shot. He's super close, and it'll be a good fight with Terrence Bud Crawford, Uga, Spence, whoever it is. I like Virgil Ortiz. He got the skills. He got the power. He can pressure. His punch output is high. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like him. He's he's legit. He's fun to watch, and I think, he, I think right now, even though he don't have the experience, uh, of a Kell Brook or Keith Thurman or even a Danny Garcia, him being young, fresh right now, he is just on a different level from all the guys. Like I like Rashidi Ellis, I like Connor Ben, but right now Virgil Ortiz and my number one guy, Jerron Boots Ennis, number one, I got him up there. Um, people are already saying that he can beat Crawford and Spence. I read so many comments of that over the last year on Boots Ennis. Um, same thing with him. I have on the level up of Virgil Ortiz. I think at one point I had Virgil Ortiz a little bit above him because of who he fought. Because he's moving fast and he's fighting better fighters. But Jerron boots Ennis. And I could be wrong. And he could be overrated. I know Sean said he was overrated. Um, but he could be. All right. But we don't know if he's under, underrated or overrated yet. All I know is that 
He looks special. He looks unique. He has the power. He has the reflexes. He has the flashiness. You know what I'm saying? He can he can switch. He can pretty much do it all. You know, and he's huge. He's bigger than Spence. He's bigger than Brooke. He's bigger than all of these welterweights. I don't even know how he can make welterweight. But right now, he looks like the best non-champion level fighter right now to me. Right now, if I had to pick him to fight all of these guys, if he doesn't beat every single one of them, I'm sure he'll beat the majority of them more so than everybody else. And that's why I have him at my number one for now. Again, this list could change. After this weekend, it can change within the year. But right now, the way I see it, he seems to be the most talented out of everybody in this list. And he's fresh, he's younger, and he got all the skills that come with it, all right? So, um, oh, of course, a lot of these fights are due to happen. Um, and, of course, I want to see more from all of these fighters. But right now, this is the way I have it, the top 10. So the people, the few people that didn't make it, um, David Avenesia didn't make it. Just because I had him on a list, but I had to push him down because Kavalaskis actually beat him. So that's the reason why I don't have him. He, he recently beat Josh Kelly. Good win. Um, he's been around. He's a vet. He is a top fighter. Uh, would love to see like a Conor Ben fight, someone like that. You know, or even a Jerron Ennis or Virgil Ortiz. But I already think those guys can beat him. Um, but David Avnesian is a guy that didn't make the list. Uh, Michael McKenzie, another guy. Good boxer. He was supposed to fight, uh, who was supposed to fight? Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz was ill. He wasn't prepared for the fight, so he had to pull out of the fight. But another guy that didn't make the list, I don't think he's top 10, but he's undefeated. He's got his good skills, real slick, um, very uh, awkward kind of style. But um, I could see him giving trouble to guys. It's just that he's just... I need to see more before I put him like in a top 10 spot. I need to see him in a like a solid win, uh, have a solid win against somebody before I start really talking about him. Cody Crowley, you know, um, he's going to fight Josecito Lopez. He had a great fight against um, uh, Adderak Adderakov. All right, might be butchering his name, but just another guy to look at. Not rating, rating him anywhere because I don't know where he, like, you know, really good. You know, I don't know how good he is yet. I've only basing it off one fight. But I do know he fights Josecito Lopez this weekend, who is very respectable. And um, if, he looks to, if he looks good in that fight, you know, just be on the lookout. Because I think that fight is going to be a war. It's a great style matchup. Both of those dudes will, are warriors. They're willing to bang. So it should be a fun fight this Saturday also on the Spence undercard. And um, Castillo Clayton had to throw him up there because he's a guy that's fighting Spence next. Um, and we just, we still, you know, he's kind of older, but he's a guy that we've been paying attention to the last couple of years, all right? Still want to see a little bit more. Good boxer, good boxer, Canadian boxer. Um, definitely got skills, just didn't make the cut. I just need to little, see a little bit more from him as well. And um, Jamal James, still got him right outside of the top 10 because he lost to Butayev stopped was stopped by him before that I definitely had him at the end of my top 10 like I said earlier but um you know he's right outside of that because of that loss and um he just didn't make the cut you know but he's still a good fighter for any of these guys some of these guys in this list if, if they were to beat Jamal James solid 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 opponent right there you know good boxer um and the last person I have uh, on this list. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Alexis Rocha. He's another fighter that didn't make the list. Um, almost skipped his name. Yeah, Alexis Rocha just beat uh, Blair Cobbs. All right, lost to Rashidi Ellis, but still a good welterweight. You know what I'm saying? Not top 10, obviously, but possibly top 15 or so. Somewhere around that area, 15, 16. Somewhere in the top 10 to 15 somewhere in around there so um be on the lookout for him he lost to Rashidi Ellis but he didn't get dominated it was a close fight and he brings a lot of pressure but Ellis kind of schooled him all right and the last person on here that I didn't didn't make the list it's a new guy Lucas Santa Maria um I saw him for the first time recently he beat Abel Ramos on a complete upset never seen this kid fight before I know he has a couple losses but Good boxer, switches well, and just another guy that we should look out for, all right? So anyway, 
that's my top 10. Um, hopefully, I could bring awareness to some of these guys. Be on the lookout for these guys. The guys that didn't make the top 10 too. Um, and also, please give me your list at the bottom. Anybody you feel like I should have added. Any other ways you thought I should arrange it, rearrange it. Whatever way you see it. Just let me know. This is a fun fantasy list. Nothing more. All right. So anyway, I'm out of here. Make sure you subscribe. Smash that like button. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.